Hey guys, this is Illusionist Jason Bishop. I'm back with another piece of magic. By the way, Happy New Year. It's about two weeks into the year, but I haven't really seen you since uh, last year. So Happy New Year to you guys. I hope you have a really good, prosperous New Year for sure. This piece was suggested by a guy named Hassan in the comment section of my Pendragons video, link up here. I appreciate you guys giving me suggestions of videos to check out, so please keep them coming in. This particular piece was taped on magician Paul Daniels TV show, which was called the Paul Daniels Magic Show on BBC One in the UK. His show ran from 1979 until 1994. Paul would perform magic or illusions on each episode and have various other segments, but he would also host top magicians and guest spots on the show, which of course is you know very cool of him, but of course it also helped to fill out the time on each episode, which is, you know, perfectly fine. It's hard to fill out time on a TV show. In this case, his guest was Hans Moretti, who I believe was a two-time FISM winner, actually, and he's performing his famous sword box illusion. Before we get started, I've been a professional illusionist for well over 10 years. I've performed on cruise ships around the world, toured colleges and theaters throughout the United States, I've been featured on TV shows in the US and abroad, and had two successful runs in New York City, and now, in between shows, rehearsal, traveling, and working on new magic, I pull up videos like this for you guys and I give you some thoughts on them as a professional illusionist. So without further ado, Hans Moretti's sword box illusion. Funny this, but eight years ago we put this particular act on the show. They came back many times, but they did this, this was the first trick I think that they did for me. And um, since that time, uh, one or two people have kind of copied it and that's not fair, really. So we thought it might be great for you to go back and see the original you know it's Hans and Helga they are the Moretti's it's actually very cool of Paul Daniels to have them back on like he said they were featured on in I believe the late 70s on his show originally they performed this illusion at some point on his show and then people stole it and it's actually really cool and very upstanding of Paul Daniels to have them back on to sort of just diss the people who stole them and to give them another featured spot of saying like this is the people who made this particular illusion or are well known for this particular illusion. It's 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 a little bit of an unusual illusion. It sort of fits a, a common theme of a sword box, but it's done very, very differently. And so we're gonna take a look at this. <laughs> Just I'll pause it right there, that's a great place to pause it, right? It's very interesting to note though, a lot of times on television when Hans Moretti would do this and Helga would do this, uh, because this has been featured on television throughout the years in America and the UK and other countries, when they tip it over, it's often been filled with helium balloons and they take the balloons out and the balloons float up. And it's kind of funny because it goes back to a Jim Steinmeier idea that the more full something is, sort of the more empty it is, which is kind of a funny thing to say. But if you fill it up with balloons and then you take it out then it seems more empty so that's a feature that they had in this illusion in quite a few TV shows that they performed why they didn't do it here I don't know I mean maybe they hadn't added it to the routine at this point maybe that came later I'm not sure it's not necessary I don't think but it was an interesting neat little part and it did help to establish that the box was empty
She just brought up two people from the audience. I think Paul is coming over as well to inspect the sword. You know, I really like their use of a piece of wood on the ground like that to take these kind of Civil War looking swords. I'm, I'm not a, I don't know a lot about swords, but uh, that type of a sword. And she's throwing them into the ground like that. I mean, a lot of people instantly go, well, a sword is collapsible when it's on stage, which is kind of ridiculous because you would usually see the little lines within the sword that make it, you know, able to telescope if it's that kind of a thing. So magicians don't really use that kind of a thing. I've frankly never used a sword that telescoped or anything like that. Uh, they have those jokey ones, people like pretend to swallow them and then do a joke uh, about it. But anyway, the long and the short is, I just like that simple fact that she has the swords, she throws them into the wood, and that indicates very easily to everybody that these are somewhat sharp, that's for sure, because they're sticking into wood, they're strong, and they can't collapse because the direction that she's throwing them in, they would collapse on themselves if they were collapsible swords. So without question, these swords are pieces of metal that have a pointy end on them, whether the blade is sharp or not is personally irrelevant to me, I don't really care, but they are big pieces of metal that absolutely could hurt you. And I really like the simplicity of her presentation with that. So we'll keep going on. Here. Oh, we go to the middle. Now, I'll just get in here because there's something important I've got. First of thing I want to do is, you won't at home probably appreciate this, but this lady has got to be one of the best magic assistants in the world, and I love her to death. Give her a nice round of applause. This is Helga. Really good. She's super. Lovely lady. And she cooks big pieces of meat. No, these are really solid swords, fellas. You've got to, you've got to um, confirm that for us, yeah? That's solid, yeah? You can, you can try sticking it in here if you want, you know? Any Paul Daniels was kind of sharpening the blades on each other as a joke, and he, as an aside, he said, and she cooks really big pieces of meat, which is kind of funny, I think. Frankly, I thought it should have gotten a better laugh, maybe. It was a little cheeky, but he has these huge swords, and he's saying that she uses them to cook meat like that. But the reason that I'm indicating this is because this is what I appreciate about Paul Daniels. It's very well known that he started off in England in, I think, the, the 60s as such, and he would do pubs and men's clubs, and these are tough environments, like bars, basically. He would do these around the UK, and that's where he cut his teeth uh, and learned his trade craft was in front of bars. These are tough audiences of working class guys, and you better be good, and you better get to your point quickly. And the other important thing is, it helps to be funny, and Paul Daniels was funny. And you know, once I had heard that he flew to Vegas and he was gonna do a show there, and he got to the backstage and one of the techs was there and said, you know, how can I help you with all your equipment? And Paul was carrying like a briefcase or something or some suitcase, and he said, this is it, this is my equipment, you know? And so he was one of these guys who could take a small suitcase and do probably an hour or two worth of material. He did Big Illusions. He, he did one of the longest running magic shows in England, actually, in London, for about two years in the early 80s. He, he did this show, you know, so he could really do it all. But the fact that Paul Daniels could could be funny and charming and and wrap that into his magic really well, that's what I really appreciate him, uh, appreciate about him, frankly. And I think that's something to be looked up to by most magicians, or at least a lot of magicians, because you can really work quite a bit. You can do corporate events, you can do cruise ships, you can do theaters. And, you know, Paul Daniels became so famous that he was doing theaters and commercials and TV guest spots and things like that. So I think he's somebody to definitely watch and learn learn from. And he had a heck of a career. And if, if you ever had a career, half of what Paul Daniels had in the UK, you, you'd have an amazing career. So let's get back to it. But there's one for you also, yeah? Very and, fun, no? uh, pardon? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, those real ones, yeah. The real ones, yeah. Is that to say it? It's correct, yeah? yeah? What are they going to do now, Helga? I think they push it on the bottom. Oh, I'm going to get out of the way. Oh, yeah, right, okay. <laughs>
I was just gonna say that, that I would prefer to see her pull those swords out from the side versus the rear because originally she had the sword blades pointed downstage, then she crossed upstage and pulled the swords out. But in doing that, she's blocking herself from the audience. You can't see her grab the handles and pull them out. You can't see her body as such. And I was hoping that she would turn it and then she put a few swords in, came to the side, turn, turn the uh, entire illusion that way, and is doing it from the side. So now we get to see the full length of the sword come out. It looks better, it's more natural, it communicates better. It also makes that box look incredibly full of swords. So really, just a sharp little detail that she did there. Obviously, she's a pro. There's a very different style of this. It's not a type of style that I really love in presentation, but for what it is, she's doing an excellent job, and she is a pretty good performer, frankly, with, with what she's doing. So let's continue watching. Just that little bit of stabbing that in there with force. It takes a little bit of force to, to make a sword stand up, you know, if you're stabbing it into wood like that. But it's visceral too, so we get that energy that she's doing there. It's theatrical and, you know, I think that looked really good the way she did that, frankly. kind of venues they did, maybe slightly more surrounded. Some of their illusions indicate that because they're not, they don't come off that angly, for instance. Like this is an illusion that could probably be performed at a halftime show. You have entertainers who do that. And so the fact that she keeps quarter turning this illusion kind of indicates to me that she probably did do this surrounded quite a bit. And it's a good idea because if you have people all around you, you need to you know, fairly show what you're doing to all of those people. And so sometimes you either move your body uh, in a circular fashion or you move objects so that each part of the audience gets a, to see a little bit of it. So she's pulled out like roughly half of the swords at this point and now she's completely rotated. So she may rotate it a full turn again before all the swords are pulled out, I don't know. But uh, so that's just something to look for. It's kind of interesting. A lot of swords. Got a live band hitting the big drum there. So, full turn and then back to the same position. That's fine. That position makes it easier for her to get down to those blocks of wood to slam the swords into, though, too. So, so there's some economy of motion there.
that is Hans Moretti's famous sword box illusion. It's obviously done with a cardboard box, which makes it a little bit different. He brings up people from the audience, which is interesting. I have to be honest with you, even among very good magicians today, how he does that in particular is pretty hotly debated. I don't know if anybody knows the exact way that Hans accomplished that because it is a somewhat difficult illusion, that's for sure. It's also stylistically different, although his style isn't really a style that I particularly love to watch, some of his magic is actually really quite good. And that's a fundamental thing you have to remember is that the fundamental value of a magician is whether or not he or she fools you or amazes you, that they do tricks that you're amazed at and you're wowed by. So that is the baseline if it's like Maslow's hierarchy, right? That's the base level. Can you fool them? Can you amaze them? Are they fooled? Beyond that, then we have personality, we have sex appeal, attitude, coolness, if you want to say. So if you look at someone like David Copperfield or David Blaine or Dynamo or Shin Lim, these people transcend the idea of just fooling you and they go now into these levels of sex appeal or, you know, cult of personality where you go, even if the guy didn't do magic, I'd kind of want to be like that guy. He seems like a cool, competent, person, what have you. So for me, Hans Moretti wasn't that magician for me, but he was a working magician. I mean, his kids even went on to be performers. He definitely had a viable career. He toured throughout Europe. He was on tons of TV shows. And frankly, some of the magic he did is really, really good magic. It's amazing, it's dangerous, it's edgy, it's questionable as to how he accomplished some of it, frankly. And I almost don't wanna mention this particular piece of magic because I don't like promoting this type of magic. I believe one of the effects that he won Fism with was a Russian roulette piece. And I'll put the link up here. You can check out this piece. Obviously, I would never, ever, ever endorse or encourage anybody to do any magic with a live firearm. But you may wanna watch this piece of magic. It, it has no link to me. It's just, I'll just put it there so you guys can see it. It's a pretty baffling piece of magic. It appears to be actually quite dangerous and it's very interesting. I haven't ever seen anything quite like that particular piece of magic. So the guy was a very good magician. And again, he had a style that, that wasn't, you know, a style that I particularly admired or loved. And you know what, that's okay. And I think that's a really good, important point, frankly, is that you can have people with different styles and you can have people with different approaches who do great magic and they can find an audience and find an entire career. And I think that's frankly pretty awesome. And he obviously worked really hard at what he did and he did some baffling tricks. So at the very end of that particular piece that we just watched, he pulls these chickens out and he's Clearly he's changed his clothes. He has makeup on his face now, which honestly that's even a little bit baffling because you think, oh, you put makeup on your face. Yeah, well, there's not really, a, there's, if you think about it, that box barely has room to move. It, that's what it appears is that he's in there pretty tightly because he's not a tiny guy. And so he's in there pretty tightly. He's clearly changed his clothes when he comes out. He has a wig on, he has a live chicken, he has another live chicken, and I think it was a duck as well. And he has the little parasols or umbrellas that he brings out and some flags and stuff. But, and also stylistically, again, to me, I don't really like that because I find that a little bit cluttered and messy and jumbled. But again, I think also culturally, that might have been a little bit more of a European thing linked to the circus, etc. that was accepted over there that wouldn't quite be accepted in the same way in the United States. But we don't have the venues that they have in Europe, frankly, for variety entertainment either, which is kind of a shame, to be quite honest with you. That's my take on him. I appreciate, uh, I think it was Hassan who, who sent me uh, the link to this video to check it out. I haven't seen this in years. I have thought about it once in a while, this particular piece of magic. It's definitely an unusual performer. And whether you liked it or you didn't like it or you admire it or you don't admire it, I hope that you look at it and you learn something from it because he was very successful. He did unusual quasi original magic that really has left people baffled for, for decades to come. To leave people completely baffled sometimes for decades, that, that's definitely a metric of success, I have to say. So thank you guys very much for watching this. I do appreciate it. Remember, if you want to learn some magic or you need some new magic, there's a link below to Vanishing Inc. This is an affiliate link. So if you do buy something using the link, it does help the channel and we do appreciate that. Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate it. So please destroy the like button if you like this video. If you wanna see more, hit subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when we release new videos and we'll see you in the next one.